Hi everybody, it's Edie with Garden of Edie, and I'm here with Claudia Muenwig with Holistic Vision, and together we help you heal. One way or another, mine is of course with food, and Claudia's is with the eyes. Well, thank you Edie for inviting me. So I got glasses at the age of three, and I really struggled with glasses, and I made it my mission since I was a teenager to get out of glasses and help me see clearly without glasses. So my mission is to help others achieve the same thing that I did. And I'm now in my early 60s. I haven't worn glasses since 20 years. Amazing. And it's absolutely possible to change your vision at any age. So there are four major eye issues that Claudia told me about that a lot of us are going to experience at one point or another in our life. And one of them is macular degeneration, right? Yes, the macular degeneration is often called age-related macular degeneration. They say AMD. And it really bothers me because it's not age related, it's really lifestyle related. And mm. food is one of those huge driving factors that people get those, that really disease that really affects your central vision, your color vision. It really means that wherever you look, you can't see anything. So it's very debilitating. So, and it happens in both eyes at the same time, or could it be one eye or another? It could be one eye or the other, but in most cases it happens in both eyes. And so when someone has macular degeneration, you're saying they can't see Clearly, or what is it exactly? So basically, so there's several eye diseases. And let's just maybe quickly give an overview. So with cataracts, you have a clouding of the lens, meaning everything looks like through a fog. With glaucoma, that's a disease of the optic nerve, you lose your peripheral vision. So you can see it's kind of like a tunnel vision, right? Mm -hmm. Macular degeneration is the opposite. So if I were to look at you, I wouldn't see your face. I would see everything around it. Mm. So it's very, imagine, you can't see anything wow. that you're looking at. Wow, and of course, you know, reading glasses and all that, and we're going to go into a whole lot of those, but today we're going to focus a little bit on macular degeneration and uh, nearsightedness, right? And so what can we do if we get that? So ideally you want to prevent it, right? Like any eye diseases, you said earlier you can heal anything. It depends on the stage of the disease. Ideally you want to prevent any diseases. And let's backtrack a little bit to nearsightedness. So nearsightedness means that you can read up close, you know, books and all these things, but far away is really blurry. And there is a correlation. So people that have a high level of what's called myopia or nearsightedness have a higher risk of getting age-related macular degeneration later on because your eyeball is kind of elongated. There's a lot of pressure on the retina, and that's what often leads to this, to this debilitating eye disease and a lack of the right nutrients, which are lutein and zeaxanthin and astaxanthin. So those are nutrients that the eyes need and we can only get them through food. So you said pressure on the eyes. Would that be like high blood pressure? Heart disease could cause that? So high blood, yes, all of these diseases, diabetes, high blood pressure, high blood sugar, all those problems are definitely related to eye diseases. There is a higher risk for glaucoma, for um, cataracts when you have diabetes. Macular degeneration is not so much directly related to diabetes, but it's related to not getting the right nutrients. I took your course and we did some exercises that would help. So can you tell people what those exercises are? Yeah, so let's look a little bit at nearsightedness first, right? Because that's often the main factor for those eye diseases. So with nearsightedness, what people do, they, they, look, they look up close and it's kind of clear, but when they look in the distance, it gets blurry. And nearsightedness can have several causes. It could be a traumatic event in childhood or what we call adverse childhood events. So people could just be, your nervous system really basically wants to keep you safe. So let's say something is really upsetting for you, right? You kind of blur that out because your nervous system wants you to make feel good. So you blur that out, you're not really nearsighted, and then you go to the doctor, you get the glasses, and voila, now you have kind of established a nearsightedness, and that leads to the elongation of the eyeball. And usually that gets stronger and stronger. And people that are nearsighted tend to stare. So they would be like, you know, like deer in the headlights staring. Wow. So one of the first things, and you're doing that beautifully right oh. now, is <laughs> blinking more, right? Oh, thank so you. So blinking is like one of those simple things that lubricates your eyes, it prevents staring, and it just keeps you, the eyes moving, which is something that we really want is that movement in the eyes. So Claudia taught me on her, in her course that you blink like this. You, you breathe in and blink, breathe out. And blink, 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 blink. Is that right? Well, that's one of the practices. There's also a head circle involved so that we release neck tension. Yeah, but blinking is one of those simple things. And studies have shown when we look at screens, we only blink two to three times per minute. We should be blinking every two to three uh, seconds, basically. And then you go to the doctor and they say you have dry eye. Exactly, which is a common problem nowadays with computers. And again, blinking 
and something called palming, which is resting your eyes, where you close your eyes and you cover them like so. In most cases, I've helped my clients actually completely reduce any needs for eye drops and those kind of things. Well, Claudia is talking, she's taught us a little bit about the blinking and the palming, but you taught us about the color game. Is that for macular? Well, not, they're all for all of the eye issues, but is that particularly something for macular dystrophy? So, yes. Yeah, so, so the, I call it color of the day. And it basically here, let's, let's again, let's backtrack a little bit. Eyesight can only happen in the present moment, right? We can visualize, we can think about the future. That's, you know, foresight, that's the future and memories. Hindsight is, is kind of the past, but we actually, the actual act of seeing, not vision, like your vision for your life, right? That's different. The act of seeing only happens in the present moment. And what I like to encourage, especially when you're nearsighted, take your glasses off, not for driving, obviously, you want to be <laughs> safe. Take your glasses off and then pick a color each day, pick a color and look around, look around. Let's say we, we see beautiful flowers of that and you look around and you're like, oh, I can see the red. And even if you don't know what exactly it is, it's kind of like that game we play with kids. I spy something, right? It keeps you in the present moment and it keeps you focusing on what you can see instead of what you cannot see, which is something I hear all the time. I'm blind without my glass. I'm like, really? And I look at the prescription, I'm like, you're not blind, you can see me, right? And they're like, yeah, 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 I can see you, but you're a little blurry. So focusing on what you can see and color of the day is one of those simple I, things. I love it. I, I said, we were, I was taking the class and it says color of the day, I said yellow. And I saw more yellow than I've ever seen in one day. It was really fun. I'd walk to the grocery store. I'd look in my house. I'd go in my closet. Just yellow was everywhere. And it's so fun to play that game. And it's fun to do it with your kids too. I totally recommend that. Hi everybody, as promised, we're in the kitchen now cooking something delicious and healthy for our eyes with Claudia. Do you like to cook? I love to cook. By the way, we're not cooking anything here. It's all raw. And raw is really good for the eyes and the body. Yes, because the vitamins are in its full, in their full capacity, and so yes, it's ideal. So we talked about leafy greens out there with the macular de degeneration. So here's some kale from my garden. We've got green and purple curly kale. And it, the purple has more anthocyanins. The deeper the color, the more anthocyanins, which is anti-inflammatory, which is anti-diabetic, and it just helps with your whole entire body. And they say, hail to the kale, because it is one of the healthiest greens on the planet. And with that, it has some asparagus and uh, Brussels sprouts and a turmeric dressing. So we're gonna get right to it, and Claudia's gonna help me make this dressing. Please start with lemon juice. It's a quarter cup of lemon juice. And just pour a little half of that water in, half a cup of tahini. I get the raw, no oil added, no salt added tahini. Some maple syrup, a couple tablespoons turmeric powder, and this is garlic. garlic really. And then we have cumin and a little cayenne. So let's blend this baby up. Okay, that's good. In the meantime, let's, let's create our kale salad. So here's all these beautiful kale. And one thing I love to do, I like to eat asparagus raw. I like it cooked too, don't get me wrong, I love it. But it's nuttier, it's crispier, it's kind of like my crouton. And we also have some Brussels sprouts. You know, it tastes really good roasted, it tastes really good steamed, but it's so healthy raw. And I just like to cut it in half and just quickly shave it. And it makes it really easy to eat. If you try to eat one raw that's whole, it's not so easy. But if you slice it, it's kind of like chewing for you so I, you don't have to. I love that. I've never tried it that way. You know? So I found marigolds in my garden because Claudia said, Tell us about marigolds. Marigolds are, you know, when you buy eye vitamins, they have that lutein, zeaxanthin, that's in kale as well. But they're usually made from, the vitamins are made from marigolds because they have very high levels and there's different kinds of marigolds. So I don't know exactly about this particular kind, but they are very there's high. There's orange, there's yellow, right, there's but, all, but they're all those deep, beautiful pigments. They're exactly, very healthy. And that's really, really good. And these are edible flowers, so yes, delicious. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so we have the kale and the the, uh, asparagus and the Brussels sprouts and goji berries. Goji berries are very, very healthy and it's so delicious with this. So you've got kind of the bitterness of the kale and then you put these sweet goji berries. As and many you soak as you them, want. right? You yes, soak you them. soak them mm -hmm. first and get them nice and soft. And then we are going to dress this delicious salad. We could have added a little bit more water to make it more pourable, but that's okay because it's going to dress the salad beautifully. Okay, you ready, Claudia? I am. Um, so pretty and delicious. And then 
for the special, special edition of Marigold Flowers. Claudia, you be the judge. So good. You like it? Mm hmm You taste the I don't cayenne? taste the salt or any of this. No. Mm, the cayenne is, could be a little bit more. Oh! <laughs> this recipe is on Garden of Eating, and it'll be on your channel, too, mm -hmm. and it's going to be fun, fun, fun. You have to try it. It's really good.